If it hasn't happened yet, your refrigerator will soon probably be covered with artwork and drawings that your infant and toddler have created and you want to just remember them. And so today we're gonna to talk about the developmental stages of drawing or writing. It's really interesting, almost everything that children do progresses in developmental stages. And artwork or writing is just another one of those things that we can kind of predict what a child will do at around a certain age based on what we have known from child development research and theory. And so making a mark on paper or scribbling and even beginning to make these first attempts at writing, this is all part of early literacy and it's a really important part of your child's preschool education and that really begins in the second year of life. You know, at about 12 months, you'll probably notice that your little one-year-old is making marks in the yogurt or pudding or whatever mess, you know, food that they have on their tray. And so I'm gonna just tell you a little bit about what these stages of writing are, show you some examples, and give you some ideas of how you can do this at your house. The stages of writing begin at about 15 months of age, and this is where um, we see random scribbling. And this is just when you give a kid a, a marker or a pencil, and they just put it to paper, and they just kind of move their hand or their arm and happen to notice that it makes a mark. It's all kind of random and accidental at this point. They're really not doing anything very intentionally, but um, we want to give them lots of opportunities with a pen and some paper to, to do some writing and to develop those skills of learning to write. So we see random scribbling from about 15 months to two and a half years. And so this stage lasts for quite a long time. All of these stages kind of stack on top of each other as well. So after random scribbling, we see what's called controlled scribbling. And I've got an example here of controlled scribbling. And um, so as you can see, there are lots of lines and shapes and marks on this piece of paper. This was drawn by a child who is two years and 11 months old. So almost three years of age, you see this type of scribbling. I'm just gonna point out a few things on this particular drawing. It's actually a great example of writing. Um, for one thing, you can tell that this little guy was um, intentional about what he was doing. So that tells us he's controlling what he's the mark that he's making on the paper. Another thing that we see here is lines and patterns. And this is the next stage of writing development. But as you can see, there's a pattern of these curved lines here. And then we see these lines here down on the bottom. We also see these figures where he made circles and actually closed them. That's another developmental marker with young children. This controlled scribbling and lines and patterns happens between two and three and a half years of age. The next stage of writing or drawing is when children begin to draw pictures of objects and animals. And I've got an example of that one here. This is a drawing that is created by a child who is four years old and actually four years, one month. And so we see a big difference in the two drawings. This one is very, very much, we can tell exactly what she's drawing. She's drawing people. And as you can see, her people have lots of detail on their face. They have eyes and eyelashes and cheeks and mouth and hair. They actually have a body with legs and arms. And here we see an animal that's got four legs and a tail and, a, and something on the face. We don't know what that is. And then over here, you can see that she has written her name, Cadence. And as you can see, the letters are correct. You can see the shape of the letters and you can read what letters they are. They're not in the right order. They're stacked on top of each other. And this is all very developmentally appropriate for a four-year-old child. If your child writes their name like this, where the letters are out of order, some of them are backwards, they're stacked on top of each other, that is perfectly fine and there's no need to correct it at all at this point. When they get to kindergarten, then they can perfect writing their names. But as they are learning to write their name, there's really no reason for you to correct it. Just celebrate the fact that they have written the letters and that you can tell what those letters are. Another thing that you can do is you can write their name and then give them a model, something to follow. The um, practice of 
writing letters kind of in those little dotted lines so that children can trace the letters. That's really not necessary in the very young ages. Actually, I'm not sure that it's necessary ever because children really need to learn to form those letters based on their understanding and knowledge of the letter, not just copying. You want them to um, kind of fully embrace and understand the shape of each letter and, and that way that will help them in their learning to read a little bit later. So um, what can you provide to help your child do all this writing and drawing? Well, first of all, with our really young children, and I'm, I'm gearing these videos for zero to three years of age, sometimes four years of age, you wanna give them materials that they can handle. You know, they're still working on their fine motor development. And so you wanna give them things, not a skinny pencil, but things that are kind of chunky. So I know that you've seen the jumbo crayons, and this would be the size crayon that you would get, give to a very young child. These are good through kindergarten. Um, if you remember, even when you went to kindergarten as a kid, these are the kind of crayons that you use when you first started school. The points don't break off very easily, and um, they're really easy to grasp. Crayons do require a little bit more pressure to get a good mark on the page. And so you might wanna start your really young children with markers because markers do not require as much pressure, not as much hand strength to get the mark. And so I've got these really nice, big, fat jumbo markers here. These would be great for beginners. And as you can see, the tip is really big. And so this is gonna make a really nice mark on the page for your infant and toddler. If you note all of these markers are washable, you wanna be sure that you give your kids washable markers. And even the washable markers do need a little bit of uh, scrubbing to get them out of some clothes. And so you wanna make sure that you kinda of just keep all that into consideration. The next size down for the markers would be just this size. Again, this is a great size for any young child and this might be good for to like give to your three-year-olds or so. I suggest that you give children um, lots of blank paper to write on. You can use just regular printer paper that you've got. You can get like a paper sack and just cut it open and lay that out. Wrapping paper, you can turn that over, if it, especially if it's a nice thick wrapping paper, you can just turn it over to the blank side and put that on a big table. Young children need Need a big broad space to draw and the bigger the better for them because they will be using their whole arm as well as their as their hand to draw with. Another thing that you can do that'll make it a little bit um, easier for them is tape the paper to the surface because it's frustrating when the paper moves around for a little one and so if you tape it down then um, then it's not moving around. Of course whiteboards are great for little ones and if you've got those those would be great. There's no need to instruct your child or teach them anything about writing and drawing. Simply give them the materials and see what they do with it. As your child is drawing, try not to compliment them or quiz them or ask them what that is. Just simply, just watch the process, watch them do it. You could talk about how hard they're working, what colors they're using. You might say, even tell me about your picture when they get a little bit older. But um, we don't want kids to get the idea that every time they're doing anything that they have to explain it to us. I think it's a really good idea to not ask all the questions when children draw. Just let them do it, let them enjoy it, and let them tell you about it when they want to. So one question you might have is, what about when your kid draws on the wall? Well, that's probably gonna happen. Here's what you do. You just understand that children are messy that you're gonna have to clean up after them and you figure out what works to get it off the wall. Those magic erasers, you know, the, the little scrubbing pads work really well. There are, you know, lots of clean cleansers out there that will take that off. You might have to repaint your walls. Expect them to write on the walls. Expect them to find a Sharpie one day and write with permanent ink on things that you don't want them to write on. It's gonna happen. That's what happens with young children. Children will learn boundaries as they grow older and that's just part of the process of being a young, really young child. They will learn their rules. You will gently remind them of their rules and you will show them where they can write and tell them you know, where, where they cannot write. So to wrap it up, I just want to encourage you to value their work. It may seem as if they are just drawing all the time and it's just kind of running out the, you know, off everywhere, all these little drawings and stuff, but save a few because you are gonna to wanna to see them later and you're gonna to wanna to remember these times. So give your kids some blank paper, 
some good markers and have some fun.